Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back. We're streaming live from our studios of FinTech Honolulu in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, I would like to introduce you to a young man, and his name is Austin Kaplan. <laughs> Austin is a faithful volunteer with YWAM, and I have a secret to share with all of you. This is my first time to meet Austin. I can talk story with him. I had his mother on my last show, and I was so impressed with what she was sharing with me off screen that I says, I got to have this young man on my show. So we asked, and this guy said, okay, Auntie, I'd love to come on. So welcome <laughs> aboard, Austin Kaplan. Yeah, hey, thank you so much for having me in this time. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, and we're going to learn a lot from you, and we're going to hear your heart. So for we're sure. going to shine that light bright for everyone to see that they can do exactly what you do and more if they want to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, I'm super excited to share with you guys today. Thank so. you. Of so course. before we get started, I want you to tell us about yourself and your a little bit about your family. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my dad was in the military. Um, I grew up in California, San Diego. Um, and then after that, we moved to Guam for three years. We lived in Guam. And then after that, uh, we moved to Hawaii. Uh, my father retired out here. He created his own company called Trident Adventures, it's like a diving company. And he we retired out here. They bought a house. And yeah, we've been living here, shoot, probably 12 to 13 years now. It's been a long time. So <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I, I take it you kind of like it here? Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I what I wanted water. to hear from people. you, how much you love it, especially being a young, and I, I, I think you guys are water people, so. Oh, really. we are. Yeah, we definitely are. <laughs> Excellent. So, you know, uh, Austin, what are you striving for to do in your life currently? Yeah, for sure. So right now I'm working for Trident, and I'm also um, in college to be a firefighter. So uh, through the fire science program at HCC on Kalihi. So um, I'm really excited to be uh, starting that here very soon. Hopefully get picked up by the federal fire department. So that's my goal right now to be doing that. So <laughs> well, that would be excellent. So you know, you sit on the in your ivory or in the orange tower. Yeah, on the exactly. Beach, and you, you know, you watch it with eagle eyes all the safety and precautions of all the people in the water. You know, I surf every week, so I uh -huh. make friends with the guy in the orange tower. All right. Um, on. Whether he knows it or not, I'm talking to him, <laughs> I'm waving at him all the time, so he knows I'm there. Um, and I also tell them about, you know, I have a, a, a like a pacemaker, a slight issue. So I want to yeah. make sure I know they're watching out for everybody, but they want to make sure that they're watching out for this auntie, right? No, <laughs> exactly. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know the golden rule. I never go out alone. So I'm all the other kupunas out there. Uh -huh, exactly. uh -huh. yeah. No, I agree with you. <laughs> Excellent. So awesome. I know that you're very actively involved with YWAM. Yes. So I would like you to tell us. Uh, how long have you been involved with this organization? Yeah, for sure. So um, I've been involved with the organization for under a year now. So it hasn't been very too long. Um, yeah, YWAM is basically like a community um, of missionaries. And they have every, all over the world. They have bases in Uganda. They have bases in Kenya. They have bases in uh, uh, Australia. Uh, everywhere you name it, they have bases all over, all over the world. It's one of the biggest organizations of missionaries uh, to this day. And they provide schooling. Um, they pro provide everything. It's a really great organization for missionaries. And um, I really enjoy the people there. Um, we've been to a couple bases. Um, so seeing how different bases work, uh, all the people are so amazing and so uplifting. It's, a, it's an awesome. Yeah. So, so tell us, what the, uh, YWAM um, is an acronym. What does that stand for? Yeah, so it's uh, Youth with a Mission. So they take uh, youth all over around the world, uh, non-denominational, uh, whatever denomination you put yourself to say. <laughs> um, and they take all these people around the world and they train you up um, in theology. And then they send you out to go uh, do the work of the God um, and wherever they need help at. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. I know I, uh, they have a YWAM um, campus. Is, is there one on, in Kona? There is one in Kona. It's actually one of the biggest bases they have. Yes. So one of the biggest ones. <laughs> right. And I, when I go to Kona, I often see a lot, lot of these like-minded, really sweet, nice kids. For sure. And they're, you know, they're being ushered around in vans, and they have a group leader. And you know, I sit down and they talk story with everybody. So I know that they must be yeah. doing something right and something good there because I can see their glow, the glow in their smiles wherever yeah, they yeah. go. 
Exactly. Yeah. The, the oh. Holy Spirit's definitely with them all the time. So, <laughs> so and it yeah. takes special minds and hearts to say, I want to commit to get involved with this program. And um, I know the light goes in. You go in with a lighted a light and you come out like a shining star because of what you're experiencing there. Exactly. Such exactly. a great program. It really is. And these people that live here, um, they work off uh, like donations from the church, donations from people. So when you volunteer at these bases, they, uh, they have you a house, uh, they make food for you, but um, they don't pay you. So they're all doing it by voluntarily because of the work for the work of the Lord. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing what kind of faith these people have. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So of all the YWAM programs around the world, yeah. where, why did you choose to go to the one that you go to? And you tell us about that, where you decided <laughs> and why. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so I was actually in Argentina, uh, Mendoza. Yeah. <laughs> Not in Kona. I could have just got a 20 minute flight to Kona, but nope, all the way around the world. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, the reason for that is because, you know, if you're born in America, born in the United States, it's really great to get out of the country, to be cultured, um, to see different kind of cultures, to see how different people live. Um, that really gives you, um, you know, a better insight um, of how everyone does things. You know, it's like there's different foods, there's different way people act, how their government works. Um, and you really see people for how they are in, in different countries. And it's uh, such a truly blessing to see these people in Argentina because the, they really have a good heart out there and uh, they work hard and their, um, their government's not the great, really, really terrible out there, the government that they have. Um, so the people, that, the people that are there, they just take it day by day and they're really nice people. They're, it's a very warm culture. So they're very warming, just like Hawaii is a very warm culture. Like, hey, come on, how are you guys? We'd love to have you. Um, but yeah, and of course it's all in Spanish. So yeah, English is very minimal there. So, um, wow. yeah, so and that's I, one of the reasons, you know, like of all the country, I mean, how come you went to Argentina and not Uganda? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I was looking at just at a couple places, um, and I was praying a lot of where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. And Lord just put on my heart, Argentina. I really didn't know what I was getting into. I really didn't know, uh, what it was going to be like, you know, and, you know, I just trusted and I just went with it. Um, and when I went, you know, everything fell into place, you know, got a little bit uncomfortable at first because I didn't know what I was going to get into. But once I got there, I knew it was the right place. I knew this is where the Lord wanted me to be and uh, to be a tool for him. So, yeah. Wow. And yeah. so when you got there, you know, you're in a South American con continent country. Yep. Yep. What was the diet like? I mean, what kind of yeah. food? Did they yeah, for sure. Them? So on the base, actually, um, they actually have all people around the world. So, um, so they, in the kitchen, they actually cook whatever you want. <laughs> so if, say, if you're from the United States, like, oh, you like hamburgers? Of course, they would say that. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I would like a hamburger. So they would cut and cook foods for you like that. But um, uh, depending where you're from, you know, uh, they always make sure that everyone likes to eat what they like pretty much. But um, like when we went to, let's say, in town somewhere, um, they have, you would think it's really spicy foods because it's kind of like, a Latina culture, right? But it's it's not. It's uh, the really flavorful, um, like chicken. They have cow intestines is actually <laughs> a huge thing there. Um, uh, very live poultry and everything. It's it's great food. <laughs> wow! Yeah. So you could actually go there and still get burgers and hot dogs because yes, that's what they really want to eat. And pizza. <laughs> and pizza, of course. And pizza. So so it, it like if you went to. The one in Kona, they wouldn't just feed you poi and lao lao. And they would give you burgers as well. They would. They would. They really would. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they got to keep you young folks happy so you exactly. can continue to learn and be happy. Um, I know. I was, so the quality of the food, the, was it really healthy food? or? No, yeah. It was. It's a little bit of a mixture. You know, you have your non-healthy foods and, of course, your healthy foods. So, you know, kind of mix and match what you want to take in that day. <laughs> Did they have a lot of beans? No, uh, no. In Brazil, they had a lot of beans. Brazil, wow. um, rice and beans is huge there, but in Argentina, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> yep. Okay. So what happens when you commit to six months of missionary work at, uh, to YWAM? Yeah, for sure. So in the six months, um, you go through this program called the DTS. And this DTS uh, stands for Disciple Training School. So in the six months, you're at this base, you're with people that you've never met before you're sharing a community with them sharing a house with them um and you go for the first three months you're in classes so every day you're in class in the morning and you go to lunch then after that you go do service work for two hours 
And then after service work, you go back to class. And then after class, there's dinner. And then you just repeat that every day, every day. And uh, you're learning about the Bible. Um, we have guest speakers coming online through different WAM bases, um, through everywhere. So when you're committing to this uh, uh, for six months, it's, um, it's schooling for the first three months. And then the last two months is when we go for our outreach. So yeah. <laughs> wow. And so what community, I mean, what communities are you going to be surrounded in? I mean, what, what, how do they know where to take you and what, what's the community like? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So the community is very uplifting. The people that you're there are so nice. They welcome you in like family. Um, the head of the base there, her name was Nida. Uh, she's from Puerto Rico. Um, she's fluent in English and in Spanish. So um, I had a bunch of translators there for me because I didn't know any Spanish at all. So everybody was so nice to me. Um, everybody translated for me. Um, the people there are always going to, you know, we have leaders. So these leaders always help you with your personal struggles that you have. Um, you're never going to find probably anyone that's really going to put you down. I mean, of course, there's always those couple people, but these people here are just so nice. <laughs> They're like family when you meet them. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. a perfect environment. It, it's, it's, it really is. Like if you're really looking for um, like another breakthrough or needing something new, you know, these pe people you're getting surrounded with are just all loving all the time. <laughs> wow. So yeah. is there a fee for all this or you just go to volunteer and what, how does this happen? Yeah, so there is a fee for the school um, and of course okay. for travel as well if you're coming from a different uh, state or country. Um, okay. But if you volunteer there, uh, there's no fees. Uh, they don't pay, they don't charge you for living. Um, so they give you a living for free and the houses that they have there are actually quite nice. Uh, depending on the base, uh, water's free, gas is free. But um, for your own personal finances to go out, to town one day or if you need a car of course you need to find your own finances for that well and would you say that someone would have to be spirit filled to even say yes yeah. to looking at this opportunity sure. versus you know like oh i have a kid and he's like not really into anything yeah and i want to you know help him find the lord so i say hey why don't you join up at ywam and see what it does for you can yeah. they? is that sometimes what happens to the, the students there Oh, hundred percent. Like usually these people that are coming here for the DTS, um, oh. they weren't doing the best. <laughs> um, okay. So when they come here, um, they really, they want to renew their lives. You know, they want to find what they had when they lost, you know, maybe five, six years ago before they started going down these paths. And they kind of just refine themselves in the Lord and through these teachings and everything that they're giving you, you just get everything back and you're rejuvenated with the Lord and everything. So it's definitely both ways. You can either, you know, if you're lost and you need the Lord more, it's definitely a great program for that. Or if you want to keep learning about the Lord more, it's also a great program for that. So yeah. uh, it'll take you from one level where you are and it just max you out where God exactly. wants you to be. Yeah, it'll shoot you right through the roof. That is for sure. <laughs> so um, you, you've got to come back saved. And um, I mean, now, oh yeah. and now you even have another goal is to be a lifeguard. And I mean, you're going to be that water man. Yep. Lives, yeah. not just physical lives but spiritual lives as well yeah, yeah. right yeah wow. exactly. i might jump off my boogie board and say help i need more <laughs> spirit in my life to just inject this in knowledge and this the hope in that you have into the rest of the people that are looking for it oh, yeah, so for sure. what a great call for you austin i'm so oh, excited yeah. thank you so much no yeah right? it's really great yeah so how is your outreach when yeah, you so, went, and what did you do while you were there? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so the outreach was amazing. So after our three months um, of our school, we have to pass our classes and our tests and stuff to be able to go out on this outreach. So they make sure, you know, because you have to live what you're being taught. So if they see that, okay, he's getting through these classes, but he's not expressing it outwardly, he's not changing in his character, they're not going to want that person that's teaching to someone else, you know, about the Lord, and they're not practicing it in their own lives, you know? So um, after that three months, uh, we went to outreach. And the first time of the outreach was um, in a different province. So this province is like a different city or state almost um, in Chaco, Argentina. Um, and these people were so broken. Um, they come from really broken families, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. Um, we helped out at churches. Um, and these churches were all new Christians. So um, we were really helping these pastors out with their new um, planted church. Um, and then when we were doing this, these people just kept flooding with us of uh, these children. We were working with them through sports, through activities, 
uh, making signs, making goodie bags for them, going to houses, um, evangelizing to houses, inviting them to the church, you know, just to really, um, just inviting them. Um, and then when that happened, uh, these kids came so broken to us. Um, and it was really sad to see that because, you know, one kid was uh, struggling with abuse with his dad. He was always beaten up um, every day, every day. And his mom left and he was living with some friends. And I remember um, after we got done uh, a teaching one day, he was just crying at the altar and I just gave him a hug and he just kept crying and crying. And I just kept hugging him for like a good half hour because he's never felt love before, uh, you know, like a hug from like a spiritual father or something. So, And especially from another man. Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. that's what they yeah. need the most, you know, especially really this young me. boy. Yeah. So, you know, it's like not only touched him, but it really touched me, you know, and, you know, what I saw and felt as well. So it was oh, a really great experience. This young man, could he speak English? Yes, he could speak a little bit of English. Uh, while I was there, I got conversationally fluent in Spanish. So, um, yeah, <laughs> all the people I was there with didn't speak English. My buddies that um, I, I met there. Um, so the whole house I was with. They didn't speak English at all. So I had to learn English. I had to learn Spanish. I'm sorry. Right. So I could speak to these people, you know, and I could speak to my teammates. <laughs> oh, and yeah. you know, Austin, what was, um, what was some of your goals during this time? Yeah, for sure. So one of my personal goals was just to find my identity again and who I was. Um, so like I was really lost in my identity of who I was for a long time as a person. Um, and I was really trying to get back. I was doing bad things. You know, I was getting in with the wrong crowd. You know, that just wasn't me personally. It really wasn't. And kind of going here was like, you know, a new step in my life with God again, you know, really just committing back to him and saying, you know what, God, I'm going to do it this time, you know, but I'm going to do it right, you know. Um, and I did it, you know. <laughs> and when wow. I did that, it felt good. It really did. What a blessing. What a blessing to be with like-minded people that are, yeah. you know, in this direction to, you know, towards the light, especially at a time when, you know, young people need this. Uh, I wish more and more could uh, find this opportunity that they can turn their darkness into this light and and continue to do more good for all. And of course, you know, you're going there to help others, but you yourself are be, are being helped. So exactly. that's the greatest. Exactly. Coming, yeah. Uh -huh. and, yeah. Coming yeah, back was... with a different goal and different desires and activities for you. And I'm so excited. I I I I'm, I look forward to just giving you a hug. Uh -huh. Thank you. you so much, Wendy. Yeah. Too, seriously. Yeah. So, well, what are some of the activities that you did with your team while you were there? Yeah, so the, we played soccer a lot. Uh, soccer is huge in uh, Latin culture. So yes. they love um, Messi, of course. Messi's a professional soccer player um, in Argentina for the World Cup. There was a cup going on there for soccer. Um, so we played soccer all the time with them. Um, we played uh, volleyball. We did plays and skits, so we had plays we set up beforehand while we were in a training part before we went to the crusade, which is the outreach. Uh, so we did plays for them about abuse. Uh, we did play like funny plays as well yes. for the little older kids. Um, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, we made uh, balloon animals. We did, um, uh, we made signs for them, you know, about, um, let's say, um, uh, let's see, what's that word? Yeah, for like struggling in their home lives, basically. So whatever was going on in their home lives, we were basically making encouragement signs to take with them so they can wow. read that at home and, and be like, oh, this is what they wrote for us. So if they're having a, a hard time, they can go back to that. And so that's what we were really doing with them. Yeah. So was there like a curriculum that you followed or did you guys say, hey, let's try this or that's not working. Let's try this. Let's do signs. Let's do balloons. Whoa. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so there's a there's a curriculum through uh, WAM that they like to do sometimes. Um, it's through their schooling, how they done it for over years and years and years. Um, right. So we kind of follow that, um, and they kind of give us ideas to implant mm -hmm. once we go out there, so we can help the kids with what they need help with. Um, but and then sometimes we have to be Johnny on the spot. We're like, right. okay, well maybe this might not work for this group of people. We kind of have to read the crowd and what's right. going on okay, as a team, let's try and, and do this, see what works, you know, and of right. course, they love it, they love it, so. <laughs> and, you know, of course, I have to ask, when you went to the province, who did all the cooking for the team? <laughs> so, all the churches did the cooking, we were staying at churches, yep, and then uh, we also raised money, if they didn't have food for us that day, we would go out to, like, a local supermarket, and we would uh, cook our own food, so, yeah. So many lessons learned and achieved, I tell you, I, I want to uh -huh. go on a YWAM, is there an age limit, or a 
Yeah, is there an age limit? No, there's no age limit. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming if you're three years old, you're not going to be able to travel by yourself. But um, there's well, no if age you're limit 63 years old, can you still go? <laughs> Heck yes, definitely. You have a young yeah. heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could definitely go 100%. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So what did you learn doing this whole time when you were in, in Argentina? And I, I, I think you went to Brazil as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Brazil was a great time as well. The people there are amazing. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, basically learning about myself a lot. Um, I learned a lot about myself again, um, what I'm doing in my life, what God really wants me to do in my life. That's the most important thing, not basically what I want to do, but what he wants to do. Um, mm -hmm. and so I was really struck, not struggling, but praying all the time while I was there. Cause you know, that's basically the point of going on this DPS is for the mission work and also, you know, refining yourself through what you're doing and the good works in the Lord. So. Yeah, so I, I really uh, focused on, you know, what am I going to do? What are my next steps in life? You know, Lord, what do you want me to do? And going throughout this process, you know, I learned that I love people. You know, I'm a really great people person, you know. Yes, you are. And, and these people just, especially being white and having blue <laughs> eyes, they love you. Too. So it's just like a magnet. And just <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, so what was the Lord speaking to you in these times? And what mm -hmm. did he teach you? teach you personally yeah, definitely so this next generation that's coming up of uh, let's say like 10 to 17 year olds they have really really strong hearts you know if we can really uh teach this newer generation or, or this new generation that's going to become us one day we really need to plant seeds in them about the lord because they have such strong hearts they really want to know who he is yes. you know it's, i know this generation right now that we're in is not the greatest but this new generation that's going to come up, you know, we can still save it. So yes. you know, that's why it's so important to be doing missionary work and, you know, taking back the, taking back the light, you know, and get wow. rid of the darkness that's out there. So that's. Well, I, I'm sure after a lot of young people see this video, no. and they <laughs> see the health uh, that you're in mentally, spiritually, emotionally, exactly. you know, the stability that you're sharing with all of us at your very young age. Yeah. Um, I, as I said, I didn't even meet you until now. And I knew that there was something special about you. And there probably is, I mean, well, there is something special about everyone, For but sure. they just have to uh, find it and discover it and then share it with others. And then from that point, it continues to blossom. Yes. And so you're blossoming and you're going to continue <laughs> to blossom. And um, I know that's not a very masculine word, but you're blossoming, you're growing in faith yeah. and in love with the Lord that created you. And exactly. so I'm so excited that we get to share this with more and more people. No, me too. So, me too. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with you. I really do. You know, that's a great way to put it. It is. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I need to ask you, what are some of the highlight moments of your whole trip? Gotcha. Yeah. So there was a lot of highlight moments. Um, one of my highlighted moments um was seeing one of the seven wonders of the world. Oh. So uh <laughs> so that was actually in Iguazu, Argentina. And it was a humongous waterfall, humongous waterfall. And it was so amazing. It was, it was such a great experience to be there. It was definitely a highlight of my moment. And of course, being in Brazil, I've always wanted to go to Brazil. Uh, it was my first time in Brazil, eating a lot of rice and beans there. That is for sure. So, um, and it's beautiful there. It's really green. It's like, imagine Hawaii, um, like on the North shore of Hawaii, but everywhere more green than that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That is my goal. I've been, Trying to get to Brazil. I have many cousins. Did you know that um, my cousins live in, I think, Sao Paulo? And um, mm -hmm. they, they have, they boast that they have one of the largest Okinawan communities outside of Okinawa. Wow. Wow. Uh, so my cousin is Okinawan. She speaks Okinawan, uh, but her first language is, of course, Portuguese. Okay. Portuguese and then Okinawan and Japanese and very little, very little um, English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Portuguese is definitely a very hard language to understand. <laughs> very hard. Um, yes. She is a radio talk show host. Wow. And so she has to be very articulate in uh, Okinawan Portuguese. And then, of course, English, not so much because they get by without it. Okay. Wow, that's crazy that she knows three languages. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, well, I think a lot of the people in all those, you know, European or, South or Amer uh, Latin American countries, they know more than one language. They it's do. us Americans that um, struggle even with the English <laughs> language. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, I agree with you. Everybody there so, that knows English is either fluent in some other 
a language, which is amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just the way it's taught. It's a given. It's not like, wow, you speak two languages. Like, <laughs> I mean, here in Hawaii, I speak English and Pidgin, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm more fluent in Pidgin and I'm struggling with the English, though. No, yeah. But we, we get by, right? And we do a lot of head and signals and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Austin, I need to ask you, what are some encouraging words that you want to share? or say to the people about mission work and living your life for the Lord. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great one. So uh, any encouraged words I can give to you guys today is um, just trust in the Lord, you know, really trust in him and what he's speaking to you, what he's saying to do in your life. <clears throat> I mean, if you're lost and you're struggling right now, you know, don't be afraid. You know, just ask the Lord, you know, just ask him for help because he will help you if you ask. Um, if, you, if, if YWAM is what you need, you know, I really encourage you, you know, to go do missionary work because it really brings out the heart, the true heart that's inside of you and the true character that's inside you. Um, because, you know, sometimes people can get caught up in two different lives. You know, you don't want to be saying one thing and doing the other, which can be, you know, really bad for people and your character as well. Um, you know, so really putting yourself out there for the Lord and actually doing what he's calling you to do. You know, you won't regret it. You won't, because mm -hmm. once you do that, you know, it's just up from there. You can't keep, you can't keep going down from there. I mean, only you can stop yourself, you know, you're the, you're your biggest, you know, so yeah, that's, that's one couple. Um, of and now that you've visited Argentina and Brazil, where mm -hmm. would your next stop be to do God's work? Yes. So my next stop, I want to go to Africa. So Yay, honestly, we're yes. going. Let's go. <laughs> yes. We're I'm definitely waiting. Yes. Go. Okay. Let's go because I first, uh, I need to go to Uganda, of course, and mm -hmm. I've seen it publicly now that in 2023, I will go to Uganda. We have an organization called King's Kids Africa, and Aww. I'll introduce that to you, and whether yes. we go with YWAM or you go there, but we'll meet there, and then we need to go to Kenya. Okay. okay? <laughs> and yes. I'll talk story about you, and maybe one we can do our show live from Kenya. That would be amazing. That would be Wouldn't so that be? cool. That would be really cool. That'd be awesome. Uh, Africa, I mean, yeah. <laughs> in, in Africa, did you have a specific country that you wanted to visit, or? Um, to be honest, I don't know yet. Um, um, I really don't. But may, I kind of want to go to the south part of Africa, probably. Um, Africa is just a really, really poor country, and they really need people there. And yes, it's they really do. Really broken, really broken country. Um, yes. and it's sad to see the people what they go through there, and the hunger yeah. problems that they have, and the water problems. You know, it breaks my heart. It really does, you know, and all I want to do is just be there with them and just, you know, just hug them. Yeah. And we're going, we're going. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you that whether we go together or I will make it happen where I'm going to see you okay. there. Yes. As long as it's in the same time frame. Yes. <laughs> but uh, as I said, my team right now is in Uganda. And awesome. um, so I think they like going in the summer for some reason. And <laughs> I know I want to be there for a few weeks and then I want to go to Kenya for a few weeks. And then maybe we can save enough pennies and also stop it back in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that would Israel be so would be great. Yeah. 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 So save your pennies. Save yeah. Your pennies. <laughs> Work hard. Say no to all that other fun stuff because the fun is yet to come. Yep. I got my penny jar waiting. So. <laughs> and I'll help you. I'll help you get there. No, yeah. Uh, Austin, it's been a true pleasure. Uh, oh, I didn't realize how much being. of an exciting life that you've already experienced. But you always know that saying the best is yet to come. Exactly. So exactly. stay true to who you are and continue to max out who God created you to be. For sure. And, uh, yeah, I tell you, the journey is just beginning. Thank you so, so much, Wendy. Our, yeah. time, <laughs> our time for now has just flown by. Oh, and wow. we wanted to say yeah. mahalo to you, Austin, for sharing your servant's heart with all of us. Of course. And I'm, and I'm sure that many of you who are watching this want to experience this life life-changing experience and so moms and dads if you're watching this yes ywam <laughs> is the way to go yeah I, I hope they have a wait list that they can <laughs> you know they have so long that people want this this exciting way a god's way of life to change them and to make the world even better so thank you so much austin for sharing your heart with us thank and, you um, wendy thank you so welcome. much for having me here today you're welcome and it's we'll see pleasure. everyone back here in two weeks on Taking Your Health Back with Wendy Lowe. So mahalo, Austin. Thank you guys so much. Aloha. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.